Welcome to season number two, episode number one, Can We Talk? I'm in the laundry room of my in-laws apartment. Songs in the hallway, and this episode we're going to be talking about intentionality. Intentionality in your marriage. And so what we're doing right now is being intentional for each other. Um, Sonia told me to stay home as she comes over to her parents to take care of her needs, their needs. If you don't know already, they both are suffer suffering with dementia. And so we come over to make sure that they have uh, the things that they need uh, throughout the rest of the day. They have care providers, uh, but in the evening we have to make sure they have the food. So we're gonna go out And uh, there's something right there. So we're going to be talking about being intentional. And being intentional means to sacrifice some things that we uh, sometimes really don't want to do in marriage, to be honest with you. We don't feel like it. We're tired. We're hungry. We want to go to sleep. I could be in the bed right now. But my wife needs me. She needs support. She needs comfort. And it may not look like it, <laughs> but she does, trust me. And sometimes that's what we have to do in marriage is be intentional. So we're here right now taking care of uh, her parents um, at 11.56 p.m. Um, so in the next few minutes, we're gonna be going into a little bit more depth in regards to you have to slam that right there? I'm proud of that. We're going to go into a little bit more depth in regards to being intentional. Right, honey? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's her parents and they're talking right now. I'm not going to show them on the video, of course. But, uh... Okay. Anything you want to say about being intentional? Cool. I appreciate you being up this hour helping me with mom and dad. It means a lot. Okay. Well, you're quite welcome. This is what we do. You my ride or die. Um, what are we riding to? Why we gotta die? <laughs> <laughs> We're riding. Why can't we just go get some Mickey D's? <laughs> right, it's love. We're not going to keep you, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Being intentional. Season number two. Episode number one. I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Welcome back to Can We Talk, season two. We hope you guys had a good summer. We are in the fall. Can you believe it? It went really fast, but it was really busy, really hectic. Some fun, but some stress. A lot of stress. <laughs> Always some stress. Like a lot Since of stress. Since the spring season to the summer season, so much has changed in our family life. Not just in our family life, like we traveled. Yeah. Along with the sessions that we've been doing. Got our kid back in college. Have mercy. <laughs> Got our other one starting high school. Have mercy. Changing schedules. She now wakes up at 5 a.m. Which means I wake up at 5 a.m. 6 a.m. bus. Um, yeah. Parents have new diagnoses. Um, they're ailing. Um, they're still with us, but uh, a lot of time taking care of them this yeah. summer. And yeah. so um, we learned a lot about ourselves and in our marriage, and we want to share that with you in this season. Yeah, so everything that we went through this summer, we really want to share with you and just talk about marriage and how we cope and how we are real mm -hmm. and how we get on each other's nerves and what do we do when we get on each other's nerves. So a lot of the information that we're going to share with you this season is about that. So as you see the seasons change, there, there is a creator. God is our creator and he made 
the universe. He made the heavens and the earth. We watch the seasons change. Fall is getting ready to be upon us. The weather is not as hot. Well, some of you, it's still hot. If you're in Barbados, it's still hot. Maybe not as hot. You're in Georgia, it's still hot. Maybe not as hot. Maybe the northern states are a little cooler, but we're all going to experience other changes. We're going to watch the fall. We're going to watch the trees um, fall off. The leaves fall off the trees. We're going to see the grass not be so green. We're not going to have to pay to get the lawn mowed. <laughs> One less expense because the grass is not going to grow the way it was. And God created seasons to let us know that change is good. Mm. But the one thing that he did do was be very intentional about what he created. Right. He's very intentional about summer. He was very intentional about winter, spring, and fall. So we're going to talk about being intentional. In, in our marriages. In our marriages, which is probably the most difficult thing to do because we get comfortable when we get married. You know, we, we were intentional when we dated. We were intentional when we wanted to take that person out. We were intentional mm -hmm. in meeting the parents and put on our on our best behavior. We were intentional we're, about setting a wedding date, mm -hmm. paying for caterers. Some of y'all didn't. Right. Most of us did. Some people eloped. Yeah. Got two wedding dates. <laughs> we're gonna skip past that. So anyway. <laughs> so but look, we, we were we we get married. <laughs> so keeping it real. We get married and, and something happens where we get comfortable mm -hmm. or something happens when we kind of look back. I don't have to really do that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to really go beyond what I'm doing. I don't have to do that because I'm already married. And then what happens is that uh, resentment kicks in. And, and, and when that happens, and then you have a bigger problem. So we're going to talk a few minutes about being intentional. So this title for today's episode is called how intentional are you? How intentional are you? And of course, we're talking about in our marriages because right. this is a marriage vlog. Singles are welcome to watch because we're actually going to have a, a single session uh, episode. Um, and so because we believe you need to be prepared to be married. And so a lot of singles are out there wondering what it's going to be like to be married. Watch this episode to see if you have what it takes because most good marriages survive being good marriages because of the intentionality of the marriage. That requires each individual to be deliberate and intentional, meaning that what I do still needs to be for him. What he does still needs to be for me. I need to make sure that I dress the way he would like me to dress or, or, or smell the way he would like me to smell or cook sometimes the food that he would like to eat and i need to do things with him in mind when we got when we were dating we did that right you know you remember that oh he likes this dress i'm gonna wear this dress for him oh he likes my hair a certain way and we're not telling you to conform completely to the whims of your partner because some of y'all are crazy and y'all have unrealistic expectations <laughs> did you say crazy yes okay. some people have unrealistic expectations I'm talking about the reasonable men and women that are watching this. You know what I'm talking about. Derek likes certain things done. I'm going to do certain things for him, but I'm not a robot. I like certain things too. So he likes my hair full. Sometimes I like it short. Sometimes I like it full. Sometimes I like it up. Sometimes I like it down. But when I wear it a certain way for him, he knows it's for him. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to always wear it like that for him, but it means that I'm considering what he likes and he knows, oh, she took time to do that for me. That's not, oh, she wore my dress that I like. I like that dress on her. I told her that before. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So don't get it twisted. Don't think that we're saying you have to do everything your spouse says to do and cook everything your spouse says to cook. We're not, you know, we're not talking like that. We're not, we're not talking in that dominant type right. of behavior. We're talking about being intentional and that means uh, being selfless. Right. That's what that means. You know, you, you can't be intentional and be selfish. Mm. You can't be intentional and you have to figure out why am I unable to be intentional? Like you saw the, um, the earlier video that we showed at, at Sonya's parents' house. Well, the backdrop to that is that we had a long day mm -hmm. and, and just clients throughout the day. And when we say clients, we, we work. I mean, this is, this is a profession that 
we're, we're, not, we're not coaches, we're not motivational speakers, we don't do the rah-rah, you know, we, we, we have the fragility of people's lives in our hands and we see miracles happen and we also see how Satan is destroying marriages. And, and when, you, when you see seven clients a day, mm -hmm. right around 12 o'clock, midnight, Sonya gets the call, I gotta go to my parents' house. And, and the thing is, we try to really, when we do our marriage and family counseling, we treat each couple or each individual as though they're the only, the only ones, ones that exist in the world. Right. Because we know that they have entrusted us with their hearts and they've entrusted us with their issues. Right. And we all have issues, but why some people come to counseling is because they, their issues get ahead of them mm -hmm. and they can't you know, function within their relationships or within their world, or within their family. And they come to us looking for help and we don't take that lightly. So it really does take a lot out of us. By the time yeah. we're finished, we have prayed, we have cried, we've asked God for guidance, we've talked, we've shared, you know, we've learned things about people that were traumatizing, and then we have to then have our own family life. Right. And so after that. And, and it's difficult. And so we, so hopefully you can understand, you know, your life and your day and what you do, because you, you know, you may not be a counselor that you both are doing counseling every day, but you're busy. Right. And so at midnight, Sonia gets the call. And she says, look, I gotta go, I gotta go to my parents' house. I gotta do A, B, and C. And honestly, I'm, the, the, for my temperament, I'm introverted. So it's spirit-filled when we do counseling for me, but when it's finished, my, my, my introvert nature shuts down. And Sonya says to me, look, I can go by myself. And she is, she's a G. She, she can roll like y'all. <laughs> she she'll go out midnight, and I that's what she does. She can do that, and, and I, I'm not too concerned about that. But at the same time, for me to be intentional in my marriage, I have to sacrifice sleep, I have to sacrifice food, I have to sacrifice me being comfortable, me trying to catch up on a game or something. And so I put my shoes on and I said, let's rock and roll. And we went down and got back in about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But that, that's in, intentional and, it's, and it comes back around to you. I guess that's what I'm saying is that when we are intentional with our spouse, and they see without even questioning. You have to, I didn't have to ask Sonia. She didn't have to ask me. We just did it. And maybe that's 23 years of marriage. Maybe this is what we do. We value each other. But if you do it and if you're intentional, it comes back around to you. And so today it came back around to you, to me. Um, and, that's, and that's the part of being intentional. I, I just have to say it's being selfless. Yeah. And it's hard to do. We're not saying it just to be saying it. It's very, very, very difficult to do because you may have some past um, issues in your marriage. There may have been some breach, a breach of trust. There may have been some, something in the marriage which is preventing you from being intentional. Uh, but there's, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible, esteem the other better than yourself. And that was Paul. And he was a single dude. He was talking to the church. Mm. So, and he was talking about being intentional. Intentional Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. That's being intentional. Mm -hmm. Well, and he made us intentionally. He made the woman to be a wife. He made the man to be a husband. And he put things inside of us to fulfill that role. That's how intentional he was. And yet again, when we get married, oftentimes we think we need to change the other person as opposed right. to respect the intentionality that God had. Mm -hmm. So I understand and respect now that Derek is not going to be like me. He's not going to do the things I do. He's a man. I'm a woman. He's a phlegmatic. I'm a choleric. Go back to season one and watch the temperaments. But we understand the differences. And so now we're intentional about accommodating them. And we're going to mm -hmm. have a, a episode where we talk about that. It's called respect the whole. We will not come back to that. But we mm. have to accommodate some of the differences that we have. And some of them may not always be appealing. So, for example, really quick before we close out, I love doing laundry. It is very therapeutic for me to see that clothes look and smell clean. I love folding clothes. I fold clothes. I listen to music while I'm folding clothes or I watch one of my favorite shows. I love the, the, the catharticness of it and the neatness of it. And maybe I am a little OCD. I am. Maybe I am. No, I'm not. Not a lot. I just have idiosyncrasies like some of you do. What? 
you you like that. Now, when I met Derek, <laughs> y'all, Derek didn't hang his clothes up, y'all. They all were on the floor, clean or dirty. You didn't know which ones were what. <laughs> How you know what's clean? What shirt, what shirt are you putting on today? How you know that's clean? They're all on the floor, right? I don't know. I, well, I know what that's about. That's another episode. Right. But I made it in my heart to decide that I'm going to help him with that. Mm. Not enable him, not be his mama, mm. but as a wife, because I'm good at the laundry, I'm going to help him with that. And sometimes, you know, we have to accommodate mm. those deficits that Derek doesn't care if clothes are lined up or hung up or put away. That's his temperament. He really doesn't care. So because I care, should I punish him? So I accommodate the fact that that's not his thing. He's going to go with me to see my mom and dad at 12 midnight. What are some clothes to fold? And if you learn how to accommodate each other's preferences and deficits, you will find that you can become more intentional about it. So right. I'm intentional when I fold his clothes. I fold them with love. I fold them with, with joy, with pride. When he puts his clothes on, he smells good because I like fabric softeners and uh, they're clean and they're neat. And I take joy in that. And I don't harass him anymore. I did when we first got married though. I used to try to change him. Why can't you pick up your clothes? Why can't you hang up your clothes? As opposed to being intentional about the fact that that's just his deficit. Now, let me explain something to you because I am a therapist and I am not talking about enabling babies, enabling behaviors. I'm talking about accommodating issues in your marriage that are not necessarily deal breakers. Clothes on the floor for me is not a deal breaker. Now, there are some behaviors that you should not tolerate. There are some behaviors that are deal breakers. And we can talk to you about that another time. I'm just talking about the day-to-day -day idiosyncrasies, shoes left in the hallway, those kinds of things. Not the major, somebody has hygiene problems and they ain't showered in three days. That's all I'm talking about. Because people have issues with that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So, you know, please take the message with a grain of salt because people are so impressionable when we leave these videos. We have to be very careful to do some disclaimers because you all will go home and think that I'm saying that it's okay to accept certain behaviors that are not acceptable. And I'm, we are talking about the day-to-day -day common courtesy, common consideration of each other's differences, strengths, and weaknesses. That's just a weakness Derek has. Clothes is not an issue. Some people keep clothes in the laundry basket till the next time it's time to do laundry. I'm not faulting them. That's just not my thing. I think clothes should be folded and hung up. So for me, I'm gonna consider him and I'm gonna do that for him because that's not his strength. His strength, Derek wakes up every morning and makes breakfast for everybody. That's not my thing because I'm not a morning person and I'm on call in the middle of the night. So I wake up to wonderful breakfast. Now, someone else might say that's a woman's role. We disagree. That's his strength. Derek likes to eat. I like to fold clothes. Well, you know, for me, if I eat, everybody. if I eat, if I put food in my mouth, everybody's going to put food in their mouth. But that's, that's, see, that's, just that's, my, a, that's a sign of a real man, that's though. Just Let me, me just say. It can be 12 o'clock. That's a sign of a good husband and a good father. Well, and I have to give you credit for that because I, Derek has always said that. If I'm eating, everybody else is going to eat. Right. Selflessness. Some, some husbands, I'm hiding what I'm eating, I eat and I go on. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that you have been able to, to continually send that well, message it, to it us. it comes back around. I mean, and that's, that's the whole point that we're making is that you know, reciprocity, you reap what you sow, you put a seed in the good soil, it's gonna come out good, a plant. And so that's what we've experienced and, and that's what works. And so for example, and Sonya doesn't know I'm gonna say this, but um, I came in um, this morning. And so she told you about my day. I, I went and ran errands, I came back, did a lot of work and came back in. It was about, I guess about 11.30. She had all the clothes lined up and all the shorts there and underwear there and the socks there. She was sitting <laughs> on the chase and and I needed comfort and I needed affection. That's it. And we talked about in our, in our vlog. Um, I'm not last sure. Last season. The last needs. season. The mm -hmm. needs. And so I came in. 
I lay right down on all on the those clothes. clothes that were all nice and pretty. On all and, the neat and clothes. Fold, and they were neat. <laughs> I, f I plopped down in her you lap. Sure did. And, and she didn't argue. She didn't say, what you doing? About? She, she says, baby, you lay on the clothes. I said, oh, my bad. And I picked one up and threw it over there. And I picked the other one up and threw it over there. And I didn't throw it. And, and I laid still it came back. And I, and I laid in her arms. And, and she just stopped what she was doing. And she gave me what I needed. Despite she was on the phone taking care of business. She's doing this. And she's a, she's, she's a doer. So she was handling business as she was trying to take care of me. And she did it. I believe you did it because what I did last night. It came, it was intentional. Oh yeah, he poured into my spirit, he so, poured into my needs. And um, I think when, you know, uh, Gary Chapman wrote that in um, The Five Love Languages, right. you fill up the love tank. Um, it's a really good book about, you know, how to meet love languages, but those were services and behaviors and actions that fill up our love tank. And so some of you guys have some um, tanks that are empty, they're on E. And so we're going to do the challenge of the week in this season. The challenge of the week in this season, the challenge of the week for this week for you is to be deliberate and intentional in filling up your spouse's love tank however you know they will receive it. Meaning that if it's something that you know they really, really care about, they really would appreciate you doing, then you are intentional about doing that. And we want to hear how it went. Somebody out there, please give us a testimony. We will share it. I promise you, we'll keep your names anonymous if you want them to be. But we want to hear how it works for you because there's something spiritual in that reciprocity that Derek's talking about. Right. And when we do that, something comes back into the marriage that otherwise would not. So our challenge for you this week is to be intentional and deliberate about pouring into your spouse's love tank, either in words, actions, thought, or deed. Okay, we're gonna do the challenge. Let's see, so if you go on to the YouTube channel, The Marriage Menders, and subscribe, and just share your thoughts in the comments section, that's how we'll know. And that's probably the best way to do it. Um, so we look forward to hearing your responses. Yeah. Um, that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. So oh, marriage yeah. is about, successful marriage is about being intentional. Right. So now that you know what, what you're, you're going to do, do with it. it. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, watching. Have a successful week. Pour into your spouse. Be intentional. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.